What's up everyone, TechLoud here and in this video I'm going to show you the camera interface of the Samsung Galaxy K Zoom and also I'm going to show you the sample photos and videos under the good lighting condition and as well as the low lighting condition. So let's check out the camera interface first and uh, I'm going to show you different modes and uh, mainly I'm going to concentrate on auto program and the manual because uh, that's the three mode which I think is the best and that I used all the time and these are the modes that you can access as you can see you have uh, manual you have night mode HDR mode and program mode and different sort of modes to be honest you don't need uh, all these modes except uh, you need the manual mode the program mode, auto mode and uh, if you like to take panorama photos then you can take uh, panorama mode. Other than that you don't need all these modes. However if you are interested in these modes then uh, you can manage and add more modes using this option over here. So let's first look at the auto mode and uh, let's check out the options we have. We have um, flash, auto or uh, on and off. We have a timer. We have uh, the tab to take a picture and we have a picture size you have a different sizes from 20 megapixels to less megapixels and you have the picture effects also available you can apply certain filters so other than that you have a signature on and off you have a photo suggest photo suggest basically is Samsung's way of uh, connecting you with the online library available uh, which is basically the photos taken by different photographers and if you are using the camera and uh, the camera recognize certain shot based on location you can it will actually give you an option to look at all those photos other than that you have uh, the video size selection also and the frames per second also you have a slow motion uh, option as well it will take a 720p video and you can use voice control as well and uh, you can also turn on the quiet zoom which is good for the video recording and uh, you can also use the wind cut which will actually help you to eliminate the wind noise while you are uh, recording the video and also you can use the remote viewfinder if you are using some other uh, compatible uh, device. And you can put three sort of uh, buttons on the left hand side you can see. And I've already put uh, auto white balance and the macro focus mode uh, here. But since it doesn't available in the auto mode so they are grayed out. So let's check out the program mode. As soon as I select the program mode you can see these buttons are now enabled. And uh, basically these three buttons are all I need uh, most of the time so that's why I have put them over there. So in addition to previous option you can see I have two additional options. I have the exposure value compensation and I have the ISO selection as well. In addition to that I have drive mode which can uh, uh, help me to change from single shot to continuous shot or the AE bracketing. And also I can now change the focus mode between the macro or the regular focus mode and also I can change the auto white balance to daylight cloudy fluorescent tungsten or custom values the custom is actually very nice if you have uh, a certain uh, object uh, white object available in uh, certain type of uh, conditions and you feel your uh, auto white balance is out you can take the shot of the white uh, object while you put uh, that object uh, in the center uh, square and you take a shot it will automatically adjust your white balance as you can see at the moment uh, the white balance is off and uh, if i press the camera shutter button while it is on the white cap and it will automatically adjust the white balance uh, based on the scene very nice i really like this option and also you have uh, the focus area selection from center to multi-focus or tracking autofocus. Tracking autofocus will help you to take photos of the moving object. And also you have the face detection on, off, normal and uh, smile shot as well or the blink shot. You have the quality selection as well and also 
you have the auto contrast on and off i like it uh, to off you have a metering option also from multi to spot and uh, center weighted these are very nice and uh, important options also you can uh, change the color saturation and uh, also the sharpness and the contrast of the image that's uh, basically going to affect your image processing and these are very nice and pro level uh, features and I really like uh, these features and I appreciate that Samsung has provided those features. And let's look at the manual mode. In the manual mode now in addition to ISO you have the aperture uh, selection as well. You can change the aperture and you can change the shutter speed. That's actually very very nice. As you can see I can change the shutter speed. However there is a problem that uh, I cannot have uh, all the aperture uh, values available to me and I can only select specific uh, aperture values uh, which is uh, not nice I want uh, more control as far as the aperture is concerned let me show you what I'm saying here for example right now I can only select between f3.1 to f9 which is uh, not good I want to see the values in between f3 and uh, f9 as well and of course uh, beyond f9 as well Let's check out the quality of the still photos. In the daylight it actually takes uh, very nice photos with a lot of detail and uh, very nice colors and the exposure is also very good. The 10x zoom works great for example here you can see I have now zoomed in 10x and uh, once again here fully zoomed out then 10, 10x zoomed in and uh, same thing over here and uh, you can see very nice and the photo quality remains very good because it's a optical zoom it's not the digital zoom it can focus uh, pretty close and you can take uh, very good uh, macro shots for a smartphone level and uh, some of the sample photos are here the level of detail is very nice The HDR also works very nice. This is the regular photo and this is the HDR photo. Same goes here. Look at the sky without HDR and with HDR works great. When you are fully zoomed out 24 mm there is little bit distortion. You can see the car. It looks little bit distorted. As you zoom in it becomes better and finally it is looking fine. And uh, indoor low light shots are really great and uh, I have no complaints uh, when you take the photos. Uh, if there are some uh, white balance issues you can uh, correct. Uh, for example in this shot you can see white balance is little bit off but you can correct it uh, using the tungsten white balance or you can use the custom white balance which is uh, very nice and I am pretty happy with this performance. This photo was taken uh, in a totally dark room and only the camera flash was used and you can see the flash works uh, fine. Focusing also works fine. This photo was taken under the low light outside using the flash and it turns out great. Another flash photo. Outside low light shots are also not bad but you can see where the lights are. You can see the halos, strange kind of halos probably because of the lens used in the camera. I have one complaint that uh, if uh, Samsung is making a camera phone then why not uh, went all the way and uh, make f2.0 aperture uh, camera phone instead of uh, f3.1 as a maximum aperture. It could have even make it even uh, better and a great camera phone. I have taken all these uh, low light shots using the manual mode or the program mode. Here I would like to show some of the photos that I took using the night mode. The problem with the night mode is that uh, some of the photos actually are a little bit softer than uh, otherwise taken uh, using the manual or the program mode. But the shots are a little bit cleaner but uh, I like the 
other photos taken using the manual and program mode. This is the nighttime video and as you can see the video has a lot of noise and grains and uh, once again this is because they haven't used a big size aperture lens. Indoor video quality is not all that bad and if the light is little bit better then the video becomes uh, really good. And if the light is not that great you will uh, find the noise again in the video but overall the video is not bad and uh, for a smartphone I have seen even uh, worse videos and this is a pretty good video not bad. The OIS actually works uh, pretty well in the images as well as in the video. For example, here you can see I'm uh, holding a camera in my hand without any steady shot. You can uh, see that uh, the video is pretty stable and uh, looking nice. The daytime video is uh, pretty good and uh, the video stabilization, the optical image stabilization is uh, pretty good. My only complaint is that they haven't provided the 4K video recording and uh, for a phone which is basically a camera phone, why they have left out the 4K video? They should have used uh, a processor which allows the 4K video recording and they should have gone with the 4K video recording with optical image, image stabilization. It would have been a very nice formula. 4k video with OIS and another problem I have seen is you can see the shaky video here if you are using the zoom function while you are recording a video then you your video will be shaky and uh, that's uh, kind of strange probably this is uh, fixable using the software and they might fix this problem in the future upgrade but at the moment as you can see once again I'm zooming in and the video is shaky this is not because of my hands this is only because of the some uh, software bug and other example of the same thing. The far focus and the close focus uh, switch uh, pretty smoothly and uh, quick enough and similarly the exposure also changes uh, quick enough and uh, smooth enough uh, without any noticeable uh, problem. The camera does uh, make actually 720p slow motion videos which is uh, okay but uh, I have uh, two complaints. It is only 720p and the second complaint is that there is no audio recording. However, you can uh, fix this problem instead of uh, shooting a 720p slow motion video you can actually shoot 1080p 60 frames per second video and uh, in the post uh, you can actually slow down the video by 50% and uh, you can uh, make the same video as a slow motion video. These are the examples where I have actually made the slow motion video using the 60 frames per second f 1080p video and I have reduced the speed by 50% to achieve the 30 fps and uh, achieving a good slow motion video. So guys uh, this was the comprehensive uh, overview of the camera interface and also the sample images and the video. Stay tuned for the future camera comparison between this camera and the other good camera phones that we have seen in the past. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos. Take care. See you. Bye.